This is Fantology. You may have heard of us. All right, what's up, Greens and Blacks? This is Steven, your host with Fantology Podcast. I have my lifelong friend Josh here, and we're talking about House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 4. Yeah, Episode 4. The one that just came out, you know, with the big dragon battle, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing full spoilers for what we've seen so far, but no spoilers for things beyond, including stuff like, is Aegon dead or alive? If you've seen the uh, trailer for the next episode, you know the answer, or if you've read the books, you know, but we're not going to really get into that at all, but we will recap the episode and just kind of give our take on what we've seen so far. Nice. And yeah, I have not watched the episode or the teaser trailer for the next episode. So yeah, I hope you I am in the, the dark. <laughs> I, yeah, okay. yeah, I have watched the episode. Okay. I nice. have indeed watched the episode, but not the teaser trailer. Um, yeah. And dude, another solid episode, maybe my favorite of the season definitely um, has one of the best orchestrated scenes in it. Just every single episode this season has been just top tier entertainment. So I'm excited to talk about it. Definitely biggest set piece action of the season so far. Probably, Probably the, the show, show, right? I don't think there was anything Maybe. bigger in season the steps, one. Yeah, the Stepstones was pretty big last season. It was pretty cool with Damon, and it had some dragon action. But yeah, I'd say that this is bigger. Yeah. I think the game of... Like the season eight set pieces end of Game of Thrones were probably bigger than this, but this was up there. I mean, it was 20 solid minutes of action to conclude the episode. A lot at stake. We'll kind of get into it and break it down. There was a good amount of other stuff that happened. So where do you want to start? Do you want to build up to it or just get right into the last scene? Yeah, we can build up to it. Um, I think that the the most of the episode um, had some of the same strengths and same weaknesses that we've talked about before in the show. Um, I, I guess weaknesses first for me, I still could care less about uh, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra's court um, besides like mm. Renice and, and, and Luke uh, or Jade. Wait, which Luce one of her sons died. is? Luce first died. Yeah. Uh, Jace. So Jace's. Jace's Jace yeah. alive. Yeah. So besides like uh, Renice, well, Rip and Corliss and, and yeah, like, those are oh, the only other, yeah. people I care about. The other ones are just kind of like they have names, but we're not even sure well, if their names have actually been spoken on the show. Yeah, They're that, just kind of like the bumbling, annoying advisors right now. And that started to kind of show in this episode that weakness with the fact that we had to be told like three times, like, oh, this person's like father was killed. Like, you know, and this person's yeah. uh is supposed to be Lord of Raven's Rook or whatever, the keep that they're starting to take. And like, I feel like that this episode kind of showed where that has kind of fallen flat on like, we should, we should know that and it would raise the stakes a little bit more. Obviously the stakes were super good and super interesting, but the fact that we had to be kind of told after the fact for um, Stephen Pacey's death, who you pointed out, the Stephen mm. Pacey, the the narrator of First Law, like that that was yeah. like one of like, the person, people's dads or whatever. What is John Abercrombie like, going to do now? Are we going to be subject <laughs> to a lesser audiobook narrator now that yeah. uh, Sir Pacey has passed? Just solid beheading, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, that's lots, kind lots of, of the jokes biggest... there. I I got to yeah. get one more, and I thought about tweeting <laughs> this at Joe Abercrombie because he's funny on Twitter, but I think it was too late. Um, but I mean, there's, there's something along the lines of, you know, if you didn't hate Kristen Cole enough, you just took away our first law audio narrator. So I think you should go for it. Yeah. It's too late. Um, it's too late. I checked his Twitter. There's already like several Stephen Pacey things on there that people, oh have. boy. so it's like, yeah, it maybe like right after if I was thinking about it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that weakness yeah, I derailed is there. You. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm, I was just kind of rambling anyway. Um, I still really like what's going on with Damon. I like that it's currently, that it's getting tied into the politics and that's kind of uh, messing with his his plans. The Alice Rivers stuff was interesting. That was a cool conversation. I'm still really interested in that, hoping that it's not just a dead end um, like Game of Thrones is, uh, like has been known to do with the mystery box stuff. Mm. Um, kind of like, and then, kind of vibes of like brand right the 
Yeah. The three eyed raven. And there's, I think there's another term for this type of thing. I think it's yeah. going to be a little bit Dream different Lane. here with, with Alice Rivers, but mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, no stuff, stuff comes of this for sure. I think I can guess where they're going with it and I think it'll be pretty good. Nice. Yeah. And then um, Alison in her court. Interesting. I like Damon and Aegon's uh, kind of relationship and bickering and stuff. It, it, it all seems well earned mean, and well You mean up. Aegon and Aemond? Aegon, sorry, Aegon and Aemond, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what did you interpret, what was your interpretation of um, Damon kind of following himself and seeing himself like kind of looking like a, uh, Aemond with his like eye patch and stuff? With his eye patch, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just leaning into the Aegon, or sorry, Aemond and Damon are really mirror images of each other yeah their letters and their names are just scrambled around right damon yeah yeah i think it is like a full scramble of their of the letters a lot of the targaryen names do have a's and e's and etc but pretty sure those are exactly the same and things will happen that really kind of like they they definitely i i like this they're they are foils That's cool. of each other. Yeah, and then and then like obviously then maybe not even I don't know if foil is the right word, but they're just like so just mirror images. Yeah, 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 really are. Well, well, even even like um, so just to rattle off a few more things, like obviously inadvertently causing the death um that sets off the war from like either side. Um like with Luke and with um with the Targaryen baby whose name I'm forgetting or son. Yeah, uh, that was Aegon's, another. Yeah. That was young Jaehaerys. Jaehaerys, yeah. But then also being the brother that was overlooked for the throne, like kind of always feeling like like a more competent brother living in. Oh yeah, their, sure. Their other brother Shadow. I think that's yeah. a big one. And then kind of like they're related, like with their both kind of sexual impotent quirks, you know, like with um, like it was kind of a theme of season one that Damon like couldn't really quite perform, and then aim. And then Eamon has, like, you know, keeps going back to the same, uh, like, sex worker that, you know, like, that he was first with. Um, And then, yeah, I don't know. That's true. There's just a lot of overlap there. So mm. it's an interesting, both brutal and feels like they they need to do what they need to do in order to, you know, get the, make it to their ends. Yeah. I will say really Eamon cool. seems a little more cunning. And Damon seems a little more wily. If I had to describe their differences in one word, I agree. Yeah, um, I think that's valid. I think that. Uh, I also think that Damon has been around the block a little bit more, so he may have, maybe, when he was a little bit younger, acted a little bit more cunning, mm-hmm. and now he's just like kind of throwing it out the window and is just doing, you know, acting a little bit more blatant, like forceful and blatant in his actions. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I mean, I, I like what they're setting up there and I think that's my interpretation of, of seeing a Amon version of himself. It, it's been fun in this episode and in, in the last episode, they brought back young Renera, Millie Alcock, right? And she yeah. she was great in the first season, and I think that was a surprise. We were not expecting to see her back, but you know, clearly, he's just got so many unresolved issues with Renera. Like, do you think? Do you you don't know what's going to happen? Do you think that relationship between the two is salvageable at this point, or has he? I think it's salvageable. Like, where is he at yeah. with his? I, yeah, I think he's going to go through kind of a crucible type thing where he's going to kind of. Uh, go on some bad trips realize what he needs to do to make a change and then you think he's going to be too far gone but he rides in on his dragon saves the day kind of last minute that's my guess for what happens okay um or comes in with an army that you 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 weren't sure kind of some mix between gandalf riding in and and aragon riding in with the with the um armies that's okay so damon the hero is josh's guess 
Uh, so you're you're definitely you said, I mean you're firmly on the sides of well the, I think it's well I think it's gonna coming in and 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 winning the day right that's well I'm I guess yeah. that's who you're cheering for I don't know I'm just saying that I think it's gonna I, I think it's gonna set up so that you think he's lost or you think he's gonna be working against Renier but off screen he's gonna change his mind somehow or something and mm. come and save the day um the other, the other interesting storyline, if you don't mind changing the subject a little bit, mm-hmm. and I didn't I didn't realize this until watching a review, but was that um was that the guy that saved it's it's hinted that the guy that saved uh Corliss is a bastard son or is um like a bastard son of his. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize that until I was I I obviously I knew that there was some underlying text of you know, uh, Renee is kind of treating him like mm-hmm. that, but yeah, I didn't, and I, I didn't realize that. And that's also why he's kind of treating him with some like disdain. The question is, does he know, like, does the bastard son know that he is his son or I don't know. Uh, I think he does. If you think back to the conversation that he had with his brother, one of them is Adam and one of them is Alan. I don't remember which one is which, but they had that conversation about Corliss and there was some subtext there of like, he is our father type thing. Oh, okay. Well, that was subtext that went over my head or under my nose, yeah. I guess. No, I mean, but I, I think they're doing a good job of, of planting seeds and then bringing them out. So uh, okay. yeah, it, it, this, at this point it has been very strongly hinted that he is indeed the bastard son and yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Well, cool. yeah. So that was cool, and also um, gave a little bit more impact to the final sequence of the episode. Which, yeah, mm-hmm. um, it, with with uh, Renice dying, with and Renice then, dying, like, how yeah. is Corliss going to? What's going to happen? Yeah, because it seems like it seems like Renice has kind of um, been Corliss's Corliss's anchor, for lack of a better term mm. you know uh for for forgiving the pun yeah um, nice yeah but um so he might just become completely unmoored with the with the pun continuation i don't know yeah, i think going. that i i think it is going to be an interesting storyline to see where he goes um from here and especially with that uh mm. tension building well not only was she Corliss's anchor, she was also really holding everything that Rhaenyra was doing together at over at the uh, Dragonstone with the Black Court, or whatever you want to call those folks. So Rhaenyra's back, at least, and seems like she is now solely focused on, okay, this war is happening, we need to win, so she should be able to step in and lead, we would assume. Uh, there's this because Renice was basically running the show. Now she's gone. Rhaenyra needs to assume command uh, in a stronger role than she has thus far. Yeah, you would hope that she does, but she's never really shown a great ability to wage war. You know, like even thinking back to her scenes in season one, she obviously she often didn't have great instincts for what to do with with stuff and like the stepstone stepstones. So it'll be interesting to see if her leadership qualities extend to the ability to win a war. And it seems like, mm. it, I guess it just seems like the Greens have that more traditional battle experience knowledge on their hands, even with characters like like Eamon and Cole. Like for as much as you don't like them, they do seem like they're pretty competent at this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, whereas uh, Renice was kind of the only person for the blacks that I could really point to and be, and be like, Oh, she kind of has a good idea of what should happen here. Mm-hmm. Now she's off the board. So one, one interesting thing that I don't quite understand, and it would have been maybe good to have Hayden here to explain, but it's not clear to me who has more experience as a dragon rider slash warrior other than like who the show is telling me has more experience and whose dragons are bigger and cooler because in the past, whatever number of years, there hasn't really been any conflicts, any 
wars really like there's been the minor stuff over the step zones but how many dragons have really been involved in war when have they had a chance to even gain that experience that they're going to use now i don't i don't know as a viewer i don't know i'm just i'm going along with what the show is telling me and i can believe it because it seems like the people that are more competent in other aspects are also better dragon riders and, and warriors but how am i really to like how do we know who is really the better warrior yeah i mean i think so far it's just been basically uh vagar is that his name yeah vagar uh, is the massive dragon the, yeah and, but that's what i mean it, it just seems like vagar and everyone all the other yeah dragons. vagar just wins everything because well i guess way yeah. bigger and luke for like luke's dragon was just kind of eaten up by by Aemon's dragon you know right so vagar. it just seems like yeah. size is pretty much oh yeah but again that was Bigger. well like obviously so, yeah just, renice had more experience she was pulling off some different techniques fighting vagar she did a decent job for a while she took down sunfire sunfire i believe is the name of aegon's dragon yeah without much problem so like she's older and is awesome in many other ways so i guess we assume that she also has battle experience but when did she fight kind of an yeah. open question I, I don't understand that yeah i guess that leads us into the like yeah. should we back up and fully talk about the the last battle sequence yeah yeah sure i so thought do you want to get to yeah uh i mean maybe things here or there will come up but so it's it's a little different than the book or the you know the fire and blood account but it's not different in in ways where you're like oh that's that's depar a departure from the source material because the source material is so vague. And it's also an account of like someone of hearsay almost written by a maester. So things could be totally wrong. Anyway, the, the difference, the, the biggest difference is that in the material, there is no reason to think that Aegon didn't know that the trap was happening. But in this one or in, in the show, he just you know he he has been belittled enough and can't stand it in spirals and rides his dragon out there and Amon is ready to go but then kind of uses this to you know as not as a personal opportunity anyway i thought this whole sequence was was awesome that part the trap itself which had been subtly set up over several episodes where we saw Amon and Cole planning and Cole was kind of making some strange decisions. I guess that was mostly in this episode. But Aemond always seems like he was going to do something. And I'm really glad that a lot of that paid off all in this scene. Yeah, I, I think that this, I think the setting up of it worked really well. Um, you got Aemon putting him in his place a little bit and Alicent. And I think it makes sense that he would act rashly and he was basically told not to do anything by allison so i don't think he was really i mean he was kept in the dark but even if he would have been told exactly why he should stay in his place i think he probably still would have done it you know he probably well, would i don't think i don't think allison knew what was happening oh uh, maybe not maybe it was just cole and, and i Amon. mean it seemed like literally only cole and amon knew what was going on yeah like that that's true like the other generals or like allison's brother didn't even know what yeah. was going on yeah right and they were looking at the board and everyone was like why are they going here this is a strange decision yeah i i got the feeling that ray niece might have had some inkling that there was a a trap being laid with the i mean we don't know for sure obviously but the way that she stepped in and said like no i've got to go and mm -hmm. she kind of seemed like she was like when she connected with her dragon Maylis, I think it seemed like it almost seemed like it was going to be their last mission. Like she was pretty aware that this could be the end. Yeah, it was so be I, the I feel like she thought there was a pretty good chance something was going to happen. Yeah, it, it did seem like it, especially it seemed like it after she went back after the, she kind of ticked out in Sunfire and you could mm -hmm. just see the expression on her face of like, 
kind of knowing that it was a suicide mission a little bit like yeah knowing that there wasn't like she just looked kind of dejected but she felt like she needed to do it which i don't know do you feel like that was the right decision or do you think she should have just like tried to get out of there it seemed like she could have mm. but i don't know why do you think she, why do you think she decided to go back i think she just saw that I think she saw the chance of taking the biggest, the biggest player off the board and kind of clearing their pathway to victory if she was successful, mm. you know, um, and uh, and so she decided that she should take it. But I don't know. It it seemed it seems like there was really no way that she was going to win that battle. I think you're right. I think I guess she... I guess maybe she could have. Sorry, sorry to keep rambling. I guess she maybe yeah. thought she could take Eamon out. And then if there was even like a gap of time when there wasn't anybody that would bond Vagar, then maybe they could have, that would have been like given them an opening to to make some good progress in the war. So maybe that was mm-hmm. her reasoning. No, I, I think you're right. I think Vagar represents the single biggest uh, threat that the greens have and really the only thing that's preventing the blacks from just flying their dragons in and taking king's landing and kind of ending this conflict so yeah i think she's she's looking to end this thing as quickly as possible and this is a chance to do that and she recognizes that the odds of success are low but i think she feels that she has to like she is duty bound to do it yeah, it just seems like if if they could, the thing is, it's interesting because uh, Vagar seems big enough that there's no one dragon can defeat him. But it seems like if they, if it seems like two dragons could take him out, you know, like if it was like if they had two dragons teaming up against Vagar, it seems mm-hmm. like they might be able. It seems like one was like harry, harrying him. Is that a word? Enough that like yeah. two would be able to like fully, fully knock him out of the, you know, knock him off the board. But maybe not. So you think all of the dragons that they had should have flown to Rook's Rest? Well, obviously they didn't know for sure that he was going to be there. And then it could have been, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But it seems like if they could if they could spring a trap and lure Vagar there and then have like uh, Damon and, uh, you know, Luke or something or uh, Jace uh-huh. go double team him seems like that would, that could be enough to take him out. I mean, they have no contact with Damon right now. <laughs> well, right, but they obviously, the Greens obviously worked out a trap for, you know, for them. So, oh, they have no contact with Damon. I mean, yeah. yeah. But the, but Rhaeny, I, 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 fine, get, I agree with what you're saying. They're but... still, well, Rhaenyra could do it herself too. Rhaenyra and I'm trying, because uh, there's really no other dragons besides, ba- uh, besides uh, Damon's girl. Who's now uh, across? Yeah, in, Bela, in... I'm pretty sure it, Bela is the one that has a dragon. She yeah. has a moon something, moon shadow. I don't know, moon dancer, something like that. Anyway, so they have. Ah, this is where we need Hayden. I think it's it's something along the lines of like six to three, or five to three in in terms of like mature dragons that could fight right now in favor of the blacks. So with with Damon's dragon, Renera's dragon, Bela's dragon, they uh, had Luke's, dra- Luke's yeah, dragon. Yeah, they had Ren- they had Ren- dragon. They had Renice. Uh, they don't Renice, have her anymore. Yeah. yeah. So now it's four to three, I guess, right? I guess that was five. Yeah, that's five down to. Wondering if they have but one n- more somewhere. Okay, five. Oh, oh, five, but three. also, oh, also, uh, what's his face is dragon. Uh, um, uh, Renera's ex. The dra- he was, oh he yeah, went, yeah, yeah. Lanor. They don't have the dragon Lainor. though. They they showed that dra- uh, sea smoke. I think they showed right. just about the dragon the, flying. The it's like a wild dragon right now. Right, but theoretically they would have more access to it than like the greens would. I guess. I think it's, oh, yeah, it's, I mean, they live on Dragonstone. Like there are wild dragons on that island. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like not a lot, but there there are dragons there. But gotcha. you have to get the dragon, right? I didn't so, know. I didn't know that, that there were. I thought all the dragons were born in into captivity and kind of bred. 
Um, again, probably a Hayden question, but there's a few that, and some of them have been like dragons of previous Targaryens that have died. Like, I mean, Lenor did not actually die, but died, right? And so then with no, uh, with no one bonding them or whatever the term is, they basically just go back to Dragonstone and hang out. Gotcha. Cool. Like that's what happened with, with, uh, Vagar, right? Yeah. Like but that's Eamon what I'm saying. Like, in. yeah. Yeah. Eamon came and bonded him, but, but that it seems like they could maybe do that with sea smoke or whatever. Anyway. Um, the, it was interesting to see, uh, Cole kind of put together the, um, the attack and, and strategy, but without any real under, like without, he may have had an understanding, but with no real comprehension of like the immense damage that dragons can can cause on the battlefield. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, that was kind of another thought I had while watching it. Like, yeah, it felt like he he knew enough to like move the pieces around, but he's just like, oh yeah, split into two so that we can distract the dragon. Like, yeah, that didn't do anything. You know what I mean? At least it didn't seem like it did on the mm-hmm. on the screen. You know, it seems like, oh, no, the dragon's just going to fly over and spray fire, and then everyone's toast, literally. Yeah. It ha- yeah, the, the dragon attacks happen very fast, and it, they, they did a really good job of showing, you know, they, they had a lot of visuals when uh, some fire crashed into the into the trees. I mean, it looked like a bomb went off in that part, and obviously the whole battlefield was, like, full of charred bodies. And, yeah, I definitely think, like you said, Cole had had a big moment where he's like oh crap like this is what i am going up against as a human riding a horse wearing metal armor like i have no chance yeah it seemed like before he like he's like okay if we just strategize we stay under the trees Mm -hmm. we stay under the cover of darkness we split the armies up we do this and that then we can you know then we can mitigate the damage that dragons can cause and up until now, it seems like it's kind of worked. And then it just seems like, nope, this is where he learns. That, yeah. You know, yeah. Why do you think he freaked out so much when he saw Aegon uh, dying, right? Like falling. To, so one thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. One thing. I don't know if this was supposed to be symbolism or if it was just, you know, good costume design or whatever. But I noticed that throughout throughout this season, really. And especially this episode, his cloak has been getting dirtier and dirtier. So it starts off white and then just kind of like got dirtier, dirtier, dirtier. And then like by the end of this episode, it was just like almost black with like ash and soot and dirt and stuff. Mm. And then um, and again, this is this might just be me reading into it or whatever. It might not be intentional symbolism. But then I think that's just meant to re- realize that like his in the end, I think he is still somewhat on, like he still has some honor and his main goal is to protect the king and he just i think that he just realized that he was a failure and that that the king is maybe dead maybe not dead i don't know um but either way he's failed in his duty to protect him and i think that's kind of why he dropped to his knees and just kind of realized that he's failed in his essential duty and in his side duties of like you know raising an army that has just been pretty much obliv- obliterated. What about the other angle of he strategized this this thing, and then Aegon came into it and is maybe dead because of Cole's plan, basically. So would he like would he shoulder the blame for this? Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, he failed on protecting the king. And in a large part because of his own arrogance and, and yeah. Uh-huh. And he's failed protecting the whole King's family, you know, like he failed in protecting right. Jaharis. He failed in, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering at this point for Cole, is it a bigger deal that he's failed in this duty or is it a bigger deal that he could be, you know, whatever punishment is appropriate for someone who has a, a bad plan and kills his king. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I think it's one in the same almost though. Like I think that yeah. Like yeah, he was about I ready to take his 
yeah, I think he was ready to take his own life, you know, at the end, in season one when he when he beat what the guy to death, and then you know Allison saved him, and now I think that this is kind of just he realizes that he's kind of in the same spot. Hmm. If I remember, I think he fell to his knees there. Maybe not. I don't know. Something similar though, a similar arc of when he failed in season one, and now he's back at that point again. Are we reading this correctly to say that if Cole had not come into that clearing right then, Amond like had his sword out, like he was going to finish the job on, on Aegon? Like, is that what was I happening? don't know. I don't know. It seemed like he was putting his sword away before Cole got there, but maybe he was. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I why would he have his sword out? He was still going through, yeah, he was still going through a battlefield, but yeah. yeah. I, I mean, he was like fairly far away, right? Like you gotta take the sword out, you're fine, you're fine, your dragon, you get down there. Why do you take your sword out unless there's an en- an enemy there to fight? Well, that's the thing, is you're walking through a battlefield, there could be easily be an enemy combatant that like thought, oh, there's the king, I can go try and take him out. But most of it was mm-hmm. his army too. So I don't know. I would probably have, all I'm saying is I would probably have my sword drawn whenever I'm on a battlefield. But yeah, you're probably, I'm, this is probably too charitable towards, I mean, he did, he didn't really hesitate in like, you know, shooting a blast of dragon fire right at his brother, you know, given but the I, chance. Given I the feel like combat. that's more, that's more defensible, right? Like we were fighting. Yeah, kind of. But if you love your brother. And, kind of, like they were okay, engaged I, and like, no one really saw what exactly happened. Like, oh, it was an accident. Right, but but it's kind of like if you have a machine gun and two other people have like little pistols and you go in there, like you could probably give, he could have given him time to disengage and he would have still had the upper hand, especially because now it's two on one and he has Vagar. You know what I mean? Like if he would have given his brother time to disengage, he still they still probably would have been able to kill her niece. Instead, he just blasts them both with dragon fire. I get. I'm not. I'm not um, trying to say if Amund it's, meant to. I, I'm just saying from a like defensibility. Yeah, he it's could, obviously you know, he more defensible. To, he, right, he can come back to court and right. say this happened. This terrible thing. But if he like that, that the other thing about the sword is if he goes and he stabs him with a sword. That's going to be He's like gonna, fairly yeah. obvious, right? Like they look at the body, right. they're like, he was, he fell from the dragon, yet there's the sword wound. Like, how did he get the sword wound? Right. So, so that, yeah, so that's kind of goes back to my point that I don't think, I don't think he was going to, you know, come mm-hmm. with the sword. If anything, it seems like he would have had a rock in his hand. Yeah. You know, go like ba- bash his head in or something. Right. Right. That, that would make more sense. Hmm. I mean, but also the dragon. All, my my take on the Sorry. whole thing, I think, is is pretty similar to yours. Where just opportunistic, he's he's up there. He's got to fight Rhaenys, and Aegon's right there too. And he's like, "What the heck? Why not go for this?" Right? <laughs> Same two, reason two why he hesitated. With right? Yeah. Um, also, the dragon was still alive. Like Sunfire was still alive. So, mm. you know, like. I think if he would have tried to kill um, Aegon, like, I don't know how wounded Sunfire was, but he might have still, you know, okay. blasted him with fire. Maybe he had his sword out because he was expecting to see what was going on with Aegon and didn't want to get too close to a dragon without a weapon to defend himself. Uh, kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I mean, if they're just trying to give off this appearance of he would have killed him if not for Cole coming up, I feel like that's a little clumsy of in the writing to say he's got his sword drawn. Like that's just so like obvious. Yeah. I think it's just meant to make you make you ponder about it, you know. I think it's meant to be interpreted either way. But yeah. I mean yeah, they definitely like that to have these ambiguous things to, to give us things to talk about uh, when we do these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but if it, if he would have had a rock in his hand, it would have been another kind of flashback to Damon in season one with his wife. I think that's how that scene ended. Was uh, she like had fallen from her horse at her head, and then he oh was right, her. right his and then, yeah his uh his wife from uh what's that family the the eerie one uh yeah yeah whatever that family name is that live out there and do nothing <laughs> right they they have a lot of sheep apparently. Um, all right any uh final notes that's gonna bug me kinda... what is what is the name <laughs> it's because it's cat's sister that's out there in game of thrones yeah yeah it's the um the whole thing starts when what's his face dies yeah i'm looking it up Usually I'm the one who comes up with these random films. It's the the Arons, right? Is that way? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Jo- yeah. 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 John Arryn uh, is the uh, hand of the king yeah. that dies, and Ned yeah. gets upset and goes down to yeah. Well, right. Right. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Okay. Yes. The Arons. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Last notes. Last notes, um, I guess I'm just going to say what I kind of hope to see from the rest of the season. This is no spoilers because I haven't read it and you can kind of like give ambiguous facial expressions. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, neutral expressions. Yeah. yeah. I, well, so I kind of hope the next episode is not a filler episode, but like kind of slows things down a little bit. We see a little bit more strategizing because there's eight episodes, right? So we still have five, six, mm-hmm. seven, eight. We're halfway through the season. Um, yeah. I, I hope we do see some more strategizing. I hope that we build out um Rainier's co- court a little bit more or get a little bit better idea of like what they're planning i hope mm. that we get to know um jace a lot better and that we also um i mean i th- i feel like Aegon. i don't know if he's still alive but now i have more kind of respect for him because he did actually do something and so i i hope that 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 drama continues between Aemon and Aegon. i, I hope don't that know. Allison- i mean he just got he just got super drunk and hopped on his dragon. And I mean, it's the equivalent. At least he did of, something. He didn't do anything okay. intelligent. Well, he did. I don't know. He, he didn't know that. He thought he was going to go. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're the king. You got to Like, no, I have no, I have no respect for this move. None. I feel like I can respect it a little bit. No, man, I don't respect that. I think... Re- okay, wait, Rhaenyra was going to do the same thing before before Rhaenys saved her. Well, good. She listened to her counselors. And she well, has earned respect, and she's respected enough to get good guidance, not people care about her. Yeah, but if she... So would you have said it was just as stupid if she would have ended up going? I think it would have been stupid if she went, yeah. But the fact I, I that, think it, I mean, the, the only it, reason he went, it was just a selfish move, is because he felt sorry for himself. No one cared about him. And so he's like, screw it. I'm going to get super drunk and go make something happen. Yeah, I don't. First of all, I don't know if he got like super drunk. I don't know if you like. They showed him just like drinking copious amounts of wine. Oh, maybe I missed that. I don't know. I, I, I just felt like he was like, OK, I'm going to. I feel like I need to do something. I feel like I can help, you know, solve this problem. I'm going to go help. I didn't feel like it was, I felt like it was dumb, but, and reckless maybe, but not like selfish. I think that move was all about him and not very much about like saving the day. He wants some glory. He wants some reason and purpose. I mean, we feel sorry for, I feel sorry for him as a viewer because he seems to have somewhat of good intentions at times and yet he is not clever enough to really do anything positive but yeah that's what i'm saying too so the one thing you can do though is ride a dragon into battle 
Hmm. Disagree. <laughs> what else is he going to do? I mean, like Allison said it the best, do do what you need to, nothing or whatever her quote was. Like, I think he, he's got to pay attention during his council meetings. Instead of saying, this is boring, I'm leaving, learn what the strategy is, contribute to that, decide where he can best be served, uh, you know, riding his dragon into battle at times. Like, nothing Fair he has enough. done okay. displays, like, any sense of maturity to me. Okay, again, I didn't say maturity. I said that he it, he was finally acting. He was finally doing something, which I stand by. It makes her, at the very least, a more interesting character than uh, than just saying uh, they're not yeah, doing anything. Yeah, for, no, fair uh, enough. Yeah, we we want active characters. Active characters are interesting. I agree with you there. All right. Well, All I don't right. know. Allison, I really want to get some more Allison. I, you know, I'm an Allison fan. Um, mm. She's she's right. annoying. But, you know, it's like, I feel like they're kind of under underusing her in some ways. Mm. Her, like her performance, Olivia Cook, that's her name, right? Her performance, yeah. I feel like is on, is on like the same level as Cersei. And I feel like they're kind of underusing her this, yeah. this season. Um, I guess she always talks out of the side of her mouth. She's like, I don't, yeah. I don't even know how to do it, but she's got this like uh, just perpetual, what is the word? Sneer, not sneer, but just like, I don't um, know. Is it just like RBF? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, just kind of. But whenever I think it's whenever more... she talks, she just got this like, you are so kind of contempt. <laughs> yeah, contempt. Sure, contempt. Yeah. 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 Um, which I think is kind of earned, though. Like she, like she was saying to uh, Aegon, she ruled for however many years, from the time she was a teenager, pretty much, until like she raised all of her kids, and so she, and she went toe to toe with her dad, who was like one of the best politicians ever, you know, and kind of, kind of won in a lot of ways, um, and so, I mean, I would say I would get more of Allison. I think Otto engineered most of the stuff that went on during Viserys's later years. Well, for a while, he was Viserys sent him away. It, oh, right, and then he came back later on. That's, came, that is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Anyway, I don't know. I just yeah. feel like I want to see more Allison. She's just a cool character, mm-hmm. and I want to see her um, uh, torch. Uh, Friggin' Cole. I hate him. Just get 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 crispy already. In episode five, I think I'm most interested in seeing if we get Otto and Darren Targaryen coming back. I wonder if the impact of Aegon's maybe death is enough to, you know, summon them back. And I, I think it's about time we got another uh, Targaryen brother in the mix. And I'm curious to see how that'll go. That'd be interesting, yeah. Um, I mean, at yeah. this point, they need all their dragons, so I think it's kind of foolish for them to leave one just like hanging out in Old Town. That's a good point. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know, man. I'm excited for the rest of the season. Um, and I think that they have things really well set up, and I do hope they slow things back down, build some more, you know, build some more attention, and uh, have an amazing last two episodes. I kind of hope overall, big picture. I hope episode five and six lay continue lay the groundwork for some big payoffs in episode seven and eight. I think that'll be about what it is. I mean, they only have so much budget for these big set pieces. There are a lot of really cool action things that happen in this whole conflict. So I, I don't know exactly what they're going to focus the most on. They could do a lot of cool stuff, but I assume there'll be you know something big to close out whether it's episode seven, a lot of times the game of Thrones episode seven is the big one. And then episode eight is right. kind of the, yeah. the fallout. So we'll see what happens in this season. We'll see. Cool. If you like what we're doing, you can join our discord invites are in the episode description below. Let us know if we got our dragon count wrong or any of the many names wrong. We probably did. So uh, be nice. We're just fans, but uh, thanks Josh. See you later. See you Steven.